Okay, uh, thank you for organizers for uh, inviting me and also like uh, uh, organizing this wonderful workshop and conference. So because Lawrence didn't talk about string theory in ADS3CFD2, so in order to compensate that, I'm going to talk about string theory in ADS3CFD2. <laughs> so, so, well, the picture is a bit too big. Uh, so, the, so, so, this is a work to get uh, work in progress and like uh, to appear with Pranabesh Mighty, who is a student in ICTS Bangalore, who is a student of Rajesh. So, let me start with the introduction and motivation. So, so the idea of reformulating gauge theories in terms of strings has a very long history, uh, starting from the amygdala Makienko loop equation and also like a nice insightful paper by Polakoff. And, but if you want to try to make it very concrete, then you immediately run into the trouble because the string theory, you can define it in critical dimensions, whereas the gauge theory, you can define in say 4D and 3D. And one way uh, to uh, avoid this problem uh, were discussed by these authors, uh, these also Polyakov, this like Hawaii, and also like a Wadia, and uh, and collaborators, and is to uh, think about the string theory in non-critical dimensions. Well, try to define it using the path integral, and if you try to define it using the path integral, then what you see is that is that like a conformal factor of the metric doesn't decouple, decouple from the matter, and it plays the role of dynamical uh, mode or matter field in on the worksheet, and and. By doing that, you get the Liouville, famous Liouville equation, and that plays the role of the extra space-time direction. And there is, of course, a concrete realization of this idea, which is known as the minimal strings or sequel one string, which is basically the duality between double-scale large and matrix models to uh, with the Liouville theory plus matter on the worksheet. And of course, by now we also have ADS-CFT correspondence which realizes, uh, the, well, which avoids this, this, this problem I mentioned in a slightly different way and which is basically the duality between large and Suzy gauge series and string in ADS. And one common feature, although like a, this old matrix model duality and ADS-CFT are a little bit different, but one common feature uh, in both duality is, is the existence of radial or Liouville or holographic direction, which basically corresponds to the extra scalar mode on the worksheet. So this nice picture is taken from the paper by uh, Benjamin and Amit and Pedro. And this is true for like a non-ADS uh, setup as well, uh, like Lebanon's Prassler, uh, which was also mentioned earlier this morning. However, uh, there is one inconvenient truth, uh, which is the following. So in recent years, uh, people have been studying the uh, confining string in large and 3D or 4D mills uh, using the lattice and famously uh, led by the group, by, uh, well done by the group led by Tepper. And what they found uh, through the lattice studies is that like in the three, in three dimensions, they don't see any extra mode on the worksheet. Whereas in 4D, they did see an extra mode, but it doesn't really correspond to a scalar mode. It actually corresponds to pseudo scalar mode. So there is no like obvious target space interpretation of that extra mode. So in summary, uh, what people have found through the lattice studies do not quite fit radial, Liouville, or holographic paradigm. Um, so, so what's going on? Like, uh, because like I already mentioned that in order to, uh, well, the, the reason why people came up with the idea of introducing Liouville direction is to uh, like uh, resolve the problem about like a conformal anomaly. So the anomaly needs to be 26 coming from the matter sector if, the, if you consider the bosonic string. So what's going on? But I should mention that like, uh, there is a different way of avoiding this conformal anomaly problem, at least in the context of effective action for confining string, uh, which was originated uh, by the study, by the, by the paper by uh, Polchinski and Strominger. And so the idea is that, well, they are basically studying really like a low energy effective action uh, around the long confining string. So, and Polchinski, Polchinski and Strominger pointed out, if you start with the number goto, action in like some general D dimensions space time, then of course it doesn't satisfy the wire anomaly condition. But if you add uh, this extra piece, uh, which is now called polchinski strominger term, with this specific coefficient, then uh, at least perturbatively, uh, well, in the context, in the sense of like low energy effective expansion, uh, you can restore the while invariance. And there are several ways to write this polchinski strominger term. 
But let me just uh, uh, introduce the one uh, uh, introduced by uh, Simeon, uh, in which like uh, uh, you can, in which you write this Polchinski Strominger term as a composite linear dilaton action. So you start with the Polyakov action and you add this term. So this looks like a linear dilaton action, but the important difference is that this is actually made out of the fields already appearing here. So by doing this, uh, so this is really, really, really reminiscent of the Polyakov Liu action, but the key difference is that you do not introduce the extra mode because the extra mode by itself is a composite of the modes that you already saw previously. So, but one thing I should emphasize is that what you, what they are doing here is just an effective fuser analysis. So you cancel perturbatively while anomaly and this action, uh, you shouldn't think of it as a UV complete theory and it's very hard to, well, in, and in general, like there are also further corrections. Okay, so this is what's happening for the effective action for confining string. And so this is the punchline of my talk and also the plan of the talk. And what we are going to, what I'm going to do is to present a string dual, uh, Walsh dual of the Cairo 2D mills. And, and I also point out that some deformation of the Walsh action can also describe the, give the string dual for a symmetric orbifold, uh, CFT or for arbitrary, arbitrary seed CFT. So this is still a proposal. Well, I, yeah. We don't have like a, a lot, like very, very like convincing evidence, but we have some evidence for this. And, and then, uh, I'm going to talk about the relation to ADS3 CFT2, uh, for, especially for like K0 equal one. And, and also I'm going to talk about the uh, relation to the matrix string. So as you go down in the list, I think things become more speculative, but I decided to, uh, talk about these in this, uh, in this workshop because I already gave a talk. Uh, like uh, two weeks ago about, uh, about this first bullet point. And one thing I should emphasize is that, uh, the, uh, the theory that I'm going to present is a calculable UV complete Warshi theory for which the extra mode is composite. Okay. So let's start. But before starting, let me just give you a very brief introduction about two dimensional EM mills, especially what I mean by Cairo two DM mills. Okay. So 2D MLs, uh, as you probably all agree, is the simplest possible confining gauge theory. And although it is very simple and it's actually exactly solvable, you can see various features of the confining gauge series like linear potential area loads for the Wilson loop and also meson spectrum. And one important thing to mention is that this theory is completely solvable even at finite end. And if you want to compute a partition function on some manifold, typically partition function is given in terms of some over representations of the gauge group, which in this case I took it to be UN. And if you take this expression and then take large n limit, then this partition function, you observe that the result factorizes into a chiral and antichiral sector. So this is the name chiral and antichiral comes from. And, and so this is the large end structure. And if you go to finite then, each chiral and antichiral partition function receives corrections. So non-planar corrections. And in addition, there will be interactions between chiral and antichiral parts. And if you want to try to define what is chiral to the MLs, it's basically defined through this definition. So I don't know like what is the, uh, like a Lagrangian definition of the theory, but there, uh, it is defined uh, through this structure of the large N expansion from the gauge theory point of view. Okay. And, and I should also mention that because 2D MLs has been known for a while, uh, there have been a lot of studies about a possible string theory dual of the 2D MLs. So the most important work in this context is done by Gross and Taylor. Uh, in which they analyze one of an expansion of the 2D MLs and they, that they showed that the result can be interpreted as string genus expansion. Uh, and chiral and antichiral parts roughly correspond to the war sheet wrapping the target space with different orientations. And however, the explicit worksheet action was not written down in these papers. Like they just pointed out that the large N expansion has the structure of the genus expansion. 
And later, uh, there, is a, there is a paper by Hojava uh, in which they propose, he proposed what's called rigid topological string, uh, which is supposed to uh, give rise to this, uh, like a genus expansion. But actually he proposes a rather complicated and it's not so easy to deal with, especially, I, I, at least I don't know how to, uh, like for example, add a boundary to this theory. And furthermore, uh, there are also some works by uh, these authors in which they uh, analyze what's called zero area limit, which is roughly corresponds, which roughly corresponds to like a zero coupling limit of the 2 dm mills. And they pointed out that can be interpreted as topological string. And furthermore, uh, Bafa pointed out that partition function on Riemann surfaces, general Riemann surfaces for the chiral theory, uh, actually coincide uh, with the topological string partition function. So this is actually a rather strong statement. Uh, However, uh, again, uh, this is based on topological string and it's not immediately clear how to, for example, add a boundary to study uh, meson spectrum. So what I'm going to do, or what we are going to do in this work is to uh, propose some Walsh's theory, which is basically a standard bosonic string. And in addition to computing partition functions, we can use it to compute scatter, something like scattering amplitudes. And we are hoping that we may be able to add boundaries to study meson spectrum. Okay, so here is the Walsh theory. So this is the Walsh theory for 2D chiral Yam mills, uh, which I, we are proposing. So it consists of three terms, three parts. The first part is what's called beta gamma system. And then I add this term, uh, which is like a half of the kinetic term. Uh, I say half because I'm, uh, this, this action doesn't have like a partial bar X, partial X bar term. So it only has half of the kinetic term. And, and it, importantly, uh, it has this analog of the polchinski strominger term, uh, which basically compensates the wire anomaly. However, uh, this is not really the same as the polchinski strominger term, because again, the, also for this uh, composite linear term, I only see like a half of what appears in the polchinski strominger So, and similarly, uh, we are proposing is that the string dual of symmetric product orbifolds for arbitrary seed CFT may correspond to this kind of action. So the one difference is that we are dropping this term. So by the way, this lambda is a two-foot coupling of the uh, two DM mills, and we are dropping this term, and then we just take this, this beta gamma system and then add this uh, chiral analog of the polchinski strominger term, and then we add the seed CFT. So that's our proposed action. So, at first, this action looks very, very complicated because of this uh, chiral analog of the polchinski strominger term. But one advantage uh, of using this beta gamma system is that because you have beta gamma system, integrating out betas basically force, forces X to be holomorphic and X bar to be anti-holomorphic. So that's why a pass integral can be managed. And then you can actually perform the pass integral explicitly. Although it's not very easy, but it, um, there are some technical difficulties, but you can still do some computation. And, and furthermore, I should mention that this can be viewed as a non-critical version of what's called non-relativistic string theory, uh, introduced first by Gomez and Oguri. So let me just explain a bit more about this point. But can the central charge of the C be anything? Right, the central charge of the C uh, CCFT is C and then that appears here. Um, so, okay, so we haven't done ex extensive computation using this worksheet action. And it seems like, but what we can say at this moment, it seems like something goes wrong if C exceeds 24 because the sign of this term changes. But, so again, like a, it's a little bit weird that like a, the bound is given by 24, not by 26. And we haven't understood fully what's going on but it seems like there is some uh, constraint. Uh, you mean supersymmetric one? Uh, well, for the supersymmetric one, I guess like we need to supersymmetrize beta gamma part as well, uh, but that we haven't analyzed. But we think like, a, well, I think there should be something similar, like a supersymmetric version of this. And what happens if the central charge is exactly 24? Then it seems a bit weird that you're basically proposing that the C theory is, is also the Wilkinson theory. 
Yes, that's one of the points. <laughs> well, actually, like I will come back to this point, especially like I'm going to refer to your work like later, so we can discuss later. So let me just uh, say a few words about non-relativistic string. So this was introduced by uh, essentially Gomez and Oguri, and also recently uh, there have been a lot of works starting from this paper, uh, Berkshoff and Gomez and Young. So I'm go not going to explain what the theory is, but let me just uh, explain some features uh, of the theory. So the first, of all, first of all, the Warshi theory is relativistic, although despite the name of the non-relativistic non string, but the important thing is that the target space spectrum is non-relativistic. And so what's the Warshi theory? So the Warshi theory is essentially beta gamma system plus like a free bosons. Uh, and you add free bosons so that like the central charge becomes 26 in the case of bosonic string. And they obtain these theories uh, by taking some kind of double scaling limit of the usual string theory uh, in the presence of B field. And essentially the, the limit you need to take is to sense, uh, is the one in which you send B field to be large and at the same time alpha prime to zero in a correlated way. And, and this precise limit, if you just do it for the open string, then like uh, this was studied uh, in different contexts, especially in the context of like a getting non-commutative gauge theory, uh, starting from the string theory. Uh, but if you do it for the closed string, and that's how you define non-relativistic string theory. So roughly speaking, this non-relativistic limit kills half of the spectrum. And, uh, and here, in this context of what I'm proposing, taking this non-relativistic limit is important to make the theory chiral because I need to kill like a half of the spectrum coming from 2D mills because I want to throw away anti-chiral parts. And also in the context of uh, symmetric product overflows, uh, taking this limit is important because it allows us to kill some kind of anti-string modes uh, which doesn't exist uh, in the symmetric product overflow. Okay. So, yeah, actually I'm, yeah. How much time I have, 15 more? Okay, yeah, that's too much. <laughs> okay, so, all right, so, so yeah, I thought I didn't have, I don't, I won't have some time, so I, I kind of like uh, decided not to mention about like a detailed computation, I just like uh, uh, present this slide about the checks. So this is <laughs> this is what I was pl planning to present. So, so like so far the checks we have done, uh, especially for the symmetric product product all before, like I, we didn't uh, do much checks. But for the two Cairo two DMs we did, uh, we are doing or we are, we did several checks. Uh, one thing we checked is that the torus partition fun function at large n comes out correctly. Uh, you can also define the analog of the scattering amplitudes of winding modes, winding string, uh, by considering like a 2D mills on uh, S1 times R. And in addition, uh, you can compute the large and expectation value of the Wilson loop and then show that uh, the expectation value exhibits the area law. Okay, maybe later. <laughs> yeah, if I have like a too much time. Uh, so, for the a string deal of symmetric product overfold, as I said, like we didn't do very much checks so far, uh, but we checked that the torus partition function, especially genus one contribution, comes out correctly. And and I should, but however, like uh, you shouldn't trust too much about what we, I'm saying because like I, this is the only check we have done so far. Uh, well, there are several reasons why I think this uh, proposal is reasonable, but. One, one important thing to do is to check the computation of the correlation functions to see uh, whether a Looney mature pres prescription for computing correlation functions in symmetric product all before it comes out correctly. But that's work in progress. What's the meaning of the twist in the web feedback? Right. You mean like a, right. So, so, so the idea is that you consider this beta gamma system uh, on a like a periodic manifold. So like uh, you periodize x and x bar. Then like uh, there is a natural winding mode in this Warshi theory, and the idea is that that corresponds to the twisted sector. So the winding string corresponds to twisted sectors. Sorry, 
That's a, that's a very good point. So, so there is one thing I didn't uh, quite explain. So in the Cairo 2 DM mills, uh, the result depends on the area of the target space. So it's very natural that uh, depending on the size of the torus, you get a different answer. However, uh, symmetric product orbifold doesn't depend on the area because area is a Kähler parameter and then a CFD only depends on the complex structure. And so precisely speaking, what we are proposing here is to take some kind of zero area limit like uh, of this beta gamma system. So you first define it at finite torus and then shrink it. So this is a little bit like a, like a subtle point that we haven't understood fully, but... Um, Um, well, so the winding modes still, I think still has some like, okay. Um, the winding modes are still like labeled by integers and that basically do, those corresponds to twisted sectors. I'm not sure like if I'm answering your question pro properly. Right, right. Um, so the energy of the target space, uh, like it shows up in a slightly different way, uh, and then, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so this is a, this is a check that we, that we set. So, so then like, uh, let me just briefly, uh, explain, uh, the two bullet points, um, that I was mentioning. So the relation to ADS3 CFT2 for K not equal one and the relation to matrix string. Okay. So the relation for AD, so let's start with the relation uh, to ADS3 CFT2 for K not equal one. So, so recently uh, there have been some work about uh, CFT dual of uh, ADS3 with WZW at a uh, finite uh, level. Uh, plus internal CFT. So this was proposed by these two pap uh, this paper and also the related work by these authors. And so the, the proposal is that that corresponds to a uh, symmetric product orbifold of, of linear dilaton plus internal CFT. But it's not just symmetric product orbifold, you also need to modify or deform it uh, by twist two operators. So that's the proposal. So this is a, a proposal about like what is the CFT dual of this string theory. But there is also yet another uh, separate line of development very recently uh, done by uh, Howder and Jeffries and Kochmeyer. And they are proposing, they propose that uh, and showed some evidence that this uh, string theory worksheet action, which is SL2R WZW model at finite level, has a yet another description based on the worksheet which is essentially beta gamma system plus linear dilaton plus lin internal CFT now deformed by winding two operators like a, so this is a, a proposal and they uh, did some checks. And now uh, by comparing these two series, you immediately see that similarity uh, with what I was proposing. So especially if you forget about deformation, like a twist, uh, two cycle twist operators and winding two operators, then this precisely becomes a particular case of what I was proposing. Uh, so it's the uh, re relation between beta uh, linear dilaton plus internal CFT plus beta gamma and the symmetric product of before the linear dilaton plus uh, internal CFT. Uh, right. Okay. So yeah. So so this is still uh, okay. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so so this is some like a. Uh, um, yeah, so this is not like a, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that like a, this is uh, fully uh, implied by our correspondence or a relation is still like a, there are some uh, unclear aspect, uh, especially like, a, yeah, the, like, a, so here, like, it's not that you can, like, a, there is a free parameter that you can uh, turn off the deformation. So, but there, like, uh, it seems like there is some natural correspondence uh, with what they are, the relation with what they are doing and what uh, we are proposing. So in some, certain, uh, yes. Right, so, so what I'm saying is that, like, uh, so here uh, you view linear dilaton plus internal as just matter CFT. And then, like, uh, it looks very similar 
to what we are saying. But as Lawrence was pointing out, like uh, the, uh, essentially uh, the, the, the coupling to the uh, rich curvature in 2D at 2D is slightly different. And there is something to be understood, uh, which might come from the deformation, but we haven't understood it. So, so let me just also mention uh, another thing, uh, which is a potential relation uh, to matrix string. So the matrix string theory is as well, especially the, which is a conjecture uh, proposed long ago, uh, which is a relation between n equals h through the um, two d m mills in two, uh, sorry, n equals h supersymmetric m mills in two dimensions, and non-perturbative type two b type two a string in discrete light quantization of flat space. So you take like a uh, light cone direction and periodize it. And the idea is that like this theory at the non-perturbative level might correspond to uh, n equals a to the m mills in two dimensions. And so whether this is not, this is really correct or not, uh, uh, doesn't really like, uh, well, it, I'm not going to discuss that uh, in this talk. But the thing I wanted to point out is that if you take this theory and then take a low energy limit, uh, there is an argument that it reduces to symmetric product or before of some supersymmetric R8. Whereas if you take an analogous limit, which is actually a perturbative limit, uh, you just get a type 2 S-string in uh, discrete light cone quantization. And, and recently, uh, there was analysis of the uh, t-duality of the non-relativistic string theory, and then they argued or they showed that the non-relativistic string theory in flat spacetime actually is t-dual to uh, discrete light cone quantization. And so once you use this t-duality, then uh, this part, uh, then like uh, the relation between here and here uh, is uh, is a SUSY version of R becomes a SUSY version of a duality. And again, like I'm not going to say that, that we prove this duality because the duality we, we are having right now is still a bosonic duality and we haven't worked out a SUSY duality, but there is a, uh, some indication uh, that this might be related uh, to what we are proposing. Okay, so let me conclude. So what we did uh, was a proposal for string deals to chiral 2 dm mills. So for chiral 2 dm mills, we have more uh, evidence and we, but we also propose some uh, potential dual to the symmetric product of Uh and and that and both duality uh, work without having a holographic directions. And there seems to be interesting connections to some recent developments in ADS3 CFT2, non-relativistic non -relativistic string, and matrix string. Although there are like a several points uh, that we still need to understand. And possible future direction is to see whether one can use this uh, Walsh theory to study the Messon spectrum, and or maybe one can study the Walsh theory and add boundaries and study some instanton correction of the two DM mills and connection study the connection to the D instanton. And and also like uh, at the end of the talk, I mentioned the relation with the matrix string, but it would be nice to understand the relation better. And um, and the question is whether there are other examples of non-holographic duality, uh, which involves, for example, four-dimensional space-time in a, like a, some five-dimensional bulk or without having uh, the radio direction. Okay, so that's the end of the talk. Thanks, Shota. So how do you understand uh, proposal of a local quantum field theory with log of dx, d bar x, uh, when you're not expanding around a long string. Right, okay. Yes. Yeah, so, 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 at the level of pass integral, uh, one can perform the, try to perform the computation. So, like, if the, so, okay, let me just go back to the action first. Right. So as you can see, like uh, this action becomes singular uh, when uh, when x is not winding or like a long are not wind long strings. Uh, but so far, what we saw is that um, so so in that con if the x is not winding, then this becomes singular and diverges. Uh, but so far, uh, it seems like it diverges in such a way that so that it makes the amplitude zero. And 
So, so in that sense, it seems there is a sense in which this might work, but I do agree that it's a little bit weird theory. Right, especially if you want to include uh, the glue balls, for instance. The glue balls are the sphere. Did you, did you do the sphere? Oh, no, sphere we haven't analyzed, but it's true indeed, yeah. Can you um, give some details of this map to the uh, space time energies that you were referring to? Um, okay. Um, yeah, let me think. Um, Yeah, it's it's more like a result of the computation. You compute a torus partition function, and um, and then um, so actually, like uh, at the level of the uh, genus zero uh, torus partition function, sorry, genus one torus partition function. So like the worksheet is torus, and also the target space is torus, and the result just comes out correctly, and and the result doesn't depend on the uh, I think the area of the space because the area dependence, for example, here only comes from this factor. And if you set it to zero, like a, it doesn't depend on the area. So... Yeah, but that's what was confusing me. What were the winding modes? That well, there is a summation over the winding modes. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, let me think. Right. Yeah, okay. Probably it's better to uh, discuss in detail later. Can I ask another question? Go ahead. Um, so, there was this slide about um, the symmetric product. Mm -hmm. Can we just? Um, sorry. This one. Yeah. So, so the question is about the left arrow. Mm -hmm. So long ago, Givon and Kutasov and Cyborg had some string theory which was with similar words. There's a beta gamma system, a linear deleton, and an internal CFT. Is that the same as as what you're? So, sorry, the left. Does this one? Yes. Um, you know, well, I guess like a, they, they didn't have something like, B, did they have beta gamma as well? If or? I remember correctly, maybe Lorenz or Matthias, maybe. Uh, so, what I can say is that this left error is supposed to be the generalization of the FZZ duality. So, you kind of the uplift of FZZ duality from FZ to our mod U1 to sign the elbow. You, Remove that U1 process, then this is the analog. I see. I see. Okay, so it's somewhat. Okay, good. Thanks. At the beginning, you mentioned that the Polchinski Strominger term should be thought of in the sense of like an effective field mm -hmm. theory. Are, are there in principle corrections to the world sheet action you wrote down, or is that supposed to be exact? Uh, so here, I, um, it's we we believe that we can think of it as an exact uh, worksheet action, uh, essentially because we can perform the path integral explicitly. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in the polchinski strominger action in the original form, we cannot perform the path integral ex explicitly, and we can only like uh, expand around some classical solution. Right. Thanks. Can you see that uh, the second line has an SL2R to an SL2R symmetry somehow? Or how can I see that it's a dual to a CFT? Okay, yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Um, right. That, yeah, that we haven't worked out. But yeah, yes. So like, you know, to see that, like we need to understand how this path integral changes if you do the kind of change of variable from x to f of x. Um, is this theory that you're proposing, like the TT bar deformation of the seed CFT? I mean, this this action looks a lot like what Herman and I also Yeah, yeah, at. okay, so sorry, I forgot to mention that. So, so this, uh, is not quite the same as TT bar deformation of the CFT you are proposing. Uh, 
but it becomes your proposal, uh, at the, well, almost your proposal, uh, if you deform this theory by beta, beta bar. So if you add the beta, beta bar, and then you can integrate out beta. Then you get like action, which is partial x, partial bar x, partial x bar, uh, plus this linear, composite linear datum plus CCFT. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. So in some sense, beta, beta bar on the worksheet corresponds to TT bar deformation. Um, I wanted to ask if you, what, did you learn something for 3V and 4V, like you mentioned in, the, in your introduction? Uh, not, 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 <laughs> not really. Which is, what's the case where you did the X path integral exactly? Oh, the, so, so the integral one, okay, so you mean the path integral? Right, so, so those are about checks, I guess. So, so one can do the computation for the torus partition function and, and also like a, some scattering amplitudes. And for the Wilson loop, we don't uh, really have a derivation based on the conformal gauge, but like a, there, there is one like a heuristic derivation based on the stat, like a, some kind of gauge fixing. Wait, so for the torus partition, that means the boundary, is it boundary the, theory is the torus? The target space is torus and also like a, the worksheet is torus. But so the world sheet, you should, should you not compute like e to the sphere plus e to the torus? Oh, the, so this, okay. So the sphere part, uh, I guess like a, it's a little bit analogous. Yeah, so that, so it has the same kind of like a problem or some subtleties as this tensionless string. So, so naively because of this like a uh, integration of a beta, so you localize the path integral to like some holomorphic map. So very naively, like you don't see any uh, correction coming from sphere. And, but this is a, a little bit subtle statement and the sphere, like we basically didn't include it. So you set the sphere to zero, but then in, in right. the torus case, do you have to compute the zero wind? Is, can you compute the zero wind? Or you say okay, that? Okay, okay, so, so the zero wind, okay. So the torus case, um, there is some uh, contribution to the z contribution from the zero winding sector, but you can basically kind of remove it uh, because there is also some kind of like a counter term ambiguity. Well, like a, you can add some like a term that's proportional to the area for the 2D ML side, and then you can kind of like a kill the zero winding contribution in that way. I, sorry, uh, <coughs> could you say just a little about how, suppose we're in a non-zero winding sector, mm -hmm. about how you actually compute the path integral over X? Well, so that is rather um, easy because like a, you first like integrate out beta, then, um, then the result is essentially like a, a summation over the holomorphic maps. And, and okay, along the way, you also need to kind of make sure that the uh, oscillator part coming from the uh, matter sector cancel the oscillator part coming from the gold sector, but that you can easily like work it out. And after that, it really like becomes a kind of sum over instant on like, uh, like some classical holomorphic map from the torus to the target space. And for each map, you just evaluate uh, this and this. And then that gives rise to like a summation over like an integer. And then there is also like a, uh, expression for the torus partition function for the 2D chiral Yam mills, uh, which is given in terms of summation of uh, the integer, and that those two expression match on the nodes. There's a Zoom question. Um, please go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Suman. Do you allow for folds in the uh, while doing the x and x bar path integral? You said holes? Fold, fold, fold. Uh, in folds? Holes. Ah, okay, sorry. The, uh, here, no. Uh, well, without inserting anything else, like we are not allowing it. And there is no reason to include that, those contributions. Okay. okay. So, in this relation to this Gross Taylor string, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, model. Mm -hmm. Um, does this string see the quantization of n? Uh, so the gross no. <laughs> well, you mean, 
So uh, if you, as long as you do the perturbation around large n, uh, one of n is a kind of some continuous parameter. Yeah, but in the gross trailer story, the, I mean, you could do some kind of one over n mm -hmm. as some summer representations and take a com continuum limit. Mm -hmm. Is there a signature of that coming out of this string theory? Whether one can see the discrete sum. Well, it won't be discrete, but at some continuum limit of some over partitions or something like oh, this. Oh, okay, okay. Um, okay, so roughly speaking, like a, this sum over representations, you can map it to some kind of like a, by using what's called Maya diagram, you can map it to sum over fermion. Mm -hmm. And the full 2D MLs has two different like a Fermi points or a Fermi, like a 1D version of the Fermi surface. And the roughly speaking, Cairo to the MLs is corresponds to focusing on the contribution coming from one end point. Um, so that's the best I can say. Thank you. And then each basically like a Fermi modes corresponds to different winding modes. Thanks. So in your last slide, you have uh, this comment about the DS5 cross CFT4 and non holographic duality. Can you say something? What what they have? Uh, how, how, how okay, I don't I don't have much to say, but uh, in some sense, uh, it's possible that like a recent proposal by um, Matthias and uh, Rajesh are also kind of like a non holographic in the sense that Warshit theory has the target space of for the Warshit theory is actually um, uh, ambit twister space of ADS five. Sorry, the of the CFT four, uh, which is more like a like a, something that you can purely define from the boundary. And that also like ambit twister space in it, uh, CFT4 is actually twister space of ADS5, uh, which you can, which is more naturally defined as a kind of like infinity of ADS. Uh, another thing I can say is that um, I don't know how to generalize our 2D ML story to uh, 4D, uh, but uh, but one thing one can do is to like uh, include additional beta gamma system. Uh, so in addition to x x bar, one can imagine doing like a beta x beta one x one beta bar beta bar one x bar one and also beta two x one x two and a beta bar two x bar two. So that's going to give you some weird theory in which like a theory uh, 4D theory uh, depends on two holomorphic directions. Um, but maybe there might be some kind of uh, like an exotic version of 4D uh, confining theory, uh, which depends on two holomorphic directions. I don't, I don't see any other questions, so let's thank uh, Shot again.